I was, uh, strategizing. Ah. It's one thing to get into the zone, but we still gotta catch that monster. Right. So did I miss anything? Fred Rachani of TSC. We have right here via Google Meet a very special guest. He's a Canadian actor. He's been in the game for quite a while, done some great things. Most recently starred in the award-winning Guardians of the Galaxy video game from IDOS Montreal and Square Enix, available on all major platforms. He plays Peter Quill, a.k.a. the Star-Lord. We are talking to actor John McLaren. John, thank you so much for taking the time to do this, man. How's everything going? Hey, what's up, Fred? Thank you for having me. I'm I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Wow. Let's just, let's just get right to it. Guardians of the Galaxy won Best Narrative at the Game Awards, hosted by Jeff Keighley. Can you talk a little bit about the fan feedback that you've received since joining the Guardians family? Yeah, yeah, of course. The uh, I mean, the feedback has been has been incredible. I mean, I, I'd I'd like to, if you don't mind, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, to Absolutely. Mary tomorrow. And uh, and Jay Abdegas, uh, Mary's team, the narrative team. Mary is the, uh, the executive narrative director for for Guardians. And um, as you saw at the the Game Awards, they absolutely knocked it out of the park, and they did such an incredible job creating this world, this story, the atmosphere of the game, these characters that we got to play. And I got to shout out, uh, I got to shout out her and the entire team because just just thank you for creating such a incredible story for for the world to play and and, and sharing it with everyone and uh, and us <laughs> as actors it's it's uh it's not every day that you get to uh to partake and uh and get to play around in a world with uh a script that is as good as this one and uh it's a very well deserved award and, and i congratulate them all but um but yeah to answer your your question fred the um the fans, the players, the community has been absolutely incredible. It's, it's, if I can be honest, it's been a little bit mind blowing. Um, you, you know, you kind of come into these things when you have a, a big release with a, uh, a healthy level of, um, you know, optimism, but you know, you try to keep yourself at bay, but, uh, I've been absolutely blown away by, by everyone who's reached out with kind words and, and support of the game and and continue they they send us photos and fan pics uh there's an amazing photo mode in the game and and the community has absolutely blown up uh and there's some really incredible artwork that's been coming out of that and uh i, I couldn't ask for more it's been it's been absolutely wonderful and i like how you guys really nailed peter quill you know all the all the qualities of him he's a, very, <laughs> he, he's a likable guy at times he can be a not likable guy he's a very flawed ind individual i personally like the random scenes where he sees a mirror and he's just standing there for a minute and you're waiting for something to happen. And he just keeps posing and fixing his teeth and fixing his hair. <laughs> just a little, a little bit of this or some <laughs> yes, of that. Exactly. <laughs> I, I love it. That, no, that, again, I mean, I mean, it comes back to, it, it really does come back to, to the writing team. Um, they did an incredible job at just nailing down, not only, not only Star Lord or Peter Quill, but like the entire team and the entire game. Um, they really created uh, a unique story, uh, characters, uh, and a world that kind of stands apart from from not only the MCU but the comics. And they they really they really nailed down making this their own, which is which is absolutely phenomenal. Definitely. And I've interviewed a number of Marvel actors in the past who have said. Whenever you get an offer or at least an opportunity to audition for any type of Marvel role, there's a lot of hush hush, a lot of confidentiality. You don't necessarily know what you're getting into until you actually get to studio or or start auditioning. So, how did that process happen for you? Did you know that you were going to be auditioning for this specific role of Guardians of the Galaxy, or was it just kind of hush hush and you learned as you went along? Yeah. So, I mean, I I was uh, I was very lucky with with my casting experience. Um, I mean. To preface this, I, I grew up playing video games, uh, Marvel video games. I grew up, I, I used, I loved, I lived and breathed like the 90s X Men animated series. Yes. Like, I, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love, love. Okay, Wolverine, especially. I mean, that if you, all, yes. the kids these, the kids these days just know the meme where he's sitting in the bed, but that show was fire. Oh man, it, it was incredible. I mean, they just announced that they re-released it as well. But you know, I mean, and as a Canadian, you know, Wolverine, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no. So I, I grew up with this stuff, and I grew up playing video games, and so 
yeah, I mean, I, I came into it as as a fan. Um, and you're right, like it's very, very hush hush. So you kind of get an audition like you would any audition from your your agent. Um, but as you said, with a Marvel product, it's very hush hush. So you're getting you're getting sides or a part of the script that is um, they've changed all the names. It doesn't say Star Lord. It doesn't say Gamora, Drax, Groot, Rocket. Uh, it was all code named. I think my name in that was like Commander jones or something like i i don't know i can't remember but um there are some very telltale things in the scripts uh that kind of tipped me off and i was like oh my god i i think this is guard i this is guardians <laughs> you know and you know so i kind of knew but i you, i didn't know but i just you know i committed it i committed to the idea that this might be guardians and i went for it and uh and luckily it worked out and you know i wasn't in the casting city so i had to just put myself on tape normally you would go to a casting studio you would show up and and audition in front of uh usually the director or maybe some of the producers uh, and stuff like that but i uh not being in the city i just put myself in tape uh on tape sorry and uh Lucky enough, I, I booked it right off of that. Normally, you would maybe get a call back and they'd bring you in, but um, thank you, Idos. <laughs> uh, they just kind of said, "Yep, that's our guy," and and the rest is history, so to speak. That, that's awesome, and I'm, I'm assuming you did most of the work prior to the pandemic, right? Yeah, I would say probably eighty five percent of the work I'm, I'm guessing here was done pre pandemic, and then when the pandemic hit. Uh, things of course, uh, shut down, um, for probably a three or four month period. We had special, we got special news that we could come back and work, uh, to work. And we were deemed, uh, an essential entertainment as a whole was deemed an essential, uh, uh, workplace. So we got to come back and, uh, Eidos did an incredible job of, uh, creating a safe atmosphere and putting all the, you know, putting all the right steps in place to make sure that, you know, we're, we're tested and we're working in a safe environment during the pandemic. And uh, we uh, we ended up uh, getting through crunch time pretty good and, and and knocking out the end of the game. So and when you were in that whole process, like 85 percent of it prior to the pandemic, were you guys all kind of in the same room interacting with each other? Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it kind of blew my mind because from my understanding and the work that I had done prior, like you're usually only, you know, having two, maybe three people in the room at once. But I mean, we had a full guardian, we had a full guardian squad up in there. <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it was pretty amazing. And, and uh, which is to say, I, we're very lucky because uh, with a team such as the guardians that rely so heavily on, on banter and camaraderie and, you know, th we never stop talking in the game. So it's, it's, it's really nice as an actor from an actor standpoint to be actually physically within the same room as people and playing off of each other, because it's very different. Um, if you're just, uh, for instance, for example, only doing voice where you're in a vocal booth and you have no one to play off of, you're kind of guessing, you know, how the line should be delivered. You're guessing how the the other characters may or may not be delivering their lines, versus when you're in a full performance motion capture scenario you're in the in, you're in the same room all the time. It's it, it's live. It's you're playing off each other in real time, and and I think that really, I think it really, I, I think it really shows in the game. Was it hard to not burst out laughing at times when the actor who played Drax <laughs> would say, "Shut up, tree." <laughs> Uh, in, it, almost impossible. <laughs> there was, there was not a day that we went into the studio where we were not, we were not laughing. It was, it was, it was such a great and special experience. It, it was, it, it was a dream come true. It really was. If I'm not mistaken, is Guardians the very first video game you've worked on? Uh, it, it is not actually. Okay. It is not. I uh, I was able to do uh, a little bit of work. I remember doing an E3 demo for uh, Far Cry 3 uh, back in the day. Uh, it was just a, a small little thing. And then I did uh, Far Cry 5. Uh, I did a bunch of, uh, I did various voices in that um, just for, you know, supporting characters around the world and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of a full full performance motion capture type scenario guardians was uh guardians was my first yeah 
And with motion capturing, I mean, how much work did, did that go into it with it, with everything? A lot of people think like when you just do the voice acting, like you're done. Maybe, maybe they'll face scan you as well. But a lot of times too, especially in a game like this, like you do have to, you know, kind of wear the suit and everything else. So how was that a whole experience? I mean, there was a, there was a day, uh, a day or two where I went in for a full facial uh, scan. It was, it was kind of neat. Like you're, you're kind of sitting in this cage surrounded by literally hundreds of cameras and you, you're just, don't move. <laughs> and they're all just, they're taking, they're taking pictures of your face and then you're doing different facial gestures and they're, they're capturing you from literally every single an, uh, angle and every single inch of you. Um, and then, yeah, when you're any given day in the, in the motion capture studio, you're, you're head to toe in that skin tight <laughs> body suit. You got the balls all over you. You're wearing a special hammer, uh, helmet, sorry, that has a camera attached to it that kind of comes out in front of your face. Uh, that's that's capturing all your facial movements and stuff like that. Uh, it's it's a wild ride, man. It's 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 really interesting. But I, I liken it to some sort of blending of maybe theater and film work. Uh, whereas in film, you you know you have cameras to deal with, you have you have lighting equipment to deal with, you have uh, sets to deal with. Where at the end of any given scene, you're cutting. And you're moving cameras, you're moving that equipment, you're sometimes changing complete locations. So you have a lot of, you have a lot more downtime in film. Whereas, uh, like theater, uh, with, with, with gaming, there's, there's no real setups in between. Um, you're just in one room, the cameras are all preset, the infrared cameras that they're capturing your movement and it's just go, go, go. Um, so it's a lot like theater in that respect where it's, you're at work and there's really no stopping. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's very challenging as an actor. It's, it's a, it's a different way or a different form of, of acting. And, um, you know, I absolutely, I, I really did. I absolutely fell in love with it. Well, you guys, it's like I said before, definitely did one hell of a job with guardian. So props to Thank you and your team, really just awesome stuff really have been enjoying the game. But of course, a lot of people, while they may know you now from guardians, may not know that you've been doing this for quite a while. So for yeah. John, how did this whole acting journey start in the first place? I started modeling actually uh, a long time ago. <laughs> oh man, you're aging me. Uh, no, I, I started in high school. Um, funny enough, uh, a, a partner of mine at the time submitted behind my back to some agencies, some photos of mine, and I got picked up by an agency and I, I started modeling, but I only did it for about a year and I, uh, the agency I was with at the time also represented actors. And they're like, Hey, do you want to, do you want to try this acting thing? And I was like, sure. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like 14 at the time or something. And, uh, funny enough, I, I went on my very first audition and I, uh, I booked the role, uh, and I absolutely fell in love with it. And I, I kind of dived in head first from there and I, I haven't stopped since I've been doing as much as I, I can, um, on and off earlier in my career uh when i was living back home um but it's uh it's a lot more now i'm very i'm very very grateful for uh for the opportunities that i've had when did you get to a point where i mean i don't know if you ever get really comfortable as an actor but when did you get to the point where you felt like things were getting a little bit more steady for you where it's like okay like i'm officially like a working actor now um i think it was probably um, a few years, uh, few years into moving to, um, to Toronto, uh, I moved out of my hometown of, of Ottawa. It's up Ottawa. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I moved to Toronto and a few years in, I, I started booking pretty regularly. So I, I, the, the pressures come, came down or came off a little bit, but, um, it's still tough, man. I, I have a lot of respect for anyone who's, who's an artist. It's not an easy, uh, it's not an easy thing to do, whether it's film, TV, painting, any, anything in the arts is, uh, it's a real hard, uh, industry and path to take. Uh, there's a lot of pushback for a very long time, but, uh, respect to, to all the artists out there. It's, uh, it's, it can be a bit of a grind, but, uh, you just got to keep at it, you know? Not that Canada's that far away from the U S obviously neighbors of the North, <laughs> but I do feel like these days, with a number of titles, I mean, just some series that come to mind for me, you know, Vikings, Working Moms, obviously yeah. all these different video games that, that are made in Canada as well. It almost feels like with technology these days, the world has gotten smaller. Do you find it 
a little bit easier for you as an actor who's primarily based in Canada to get more opportunities? Oh, absolutely. Like it's, it's, uh, especially with, I mean, maybe that's one, you know, maybe that's a silver lining of, of the pandemic, but it, it really has kind of in that respect brought down borders because, you know, I'm, I'm auditioning all the time for stuff in Canada, not only Canada, sorry, but also the States. Like you're, you're auditioning all over the place. I've worked in the States. I've worked in Canada. I've worked overseas and it's, it's just kind of by proxy of the digital age that we live in. It's, it's completely, you know, it, it's broken down those, those borders, which is, which is nice for us in our industry anyways. And you mentioned earlier that when you auditioned for Guardians, was a it was like a self tape, like kind of like you did like your own like your own like audition and then sent it to them, or did you have to like still physically go somewhere? Yeah, so so often, like especially if I'm I'm auditioning for things that are out of the the city that I'm currently in, like if I'm auditioning for something you know in the states or you know even even out of province, you you're not there in person. So typically, what you will do is put yourself on tape. Uh, you'll put your audition on tape and send it off. And then typically, normally what happens is if they like you, then they'll bring you in and you'll do a screen test or something like that. And you'll kind of have a second, maybe third, even sometimes four rounds of casting before you get the role. But um, I thank my lucky my lucky stars that I I just only put myself on tape and uh, Idos took a chance on me and and – I'm forever grateful that they did and took a lot of stress out of the casting process for myself. And the reason I bring that up again is because, you know, a lot of actors have told me during the pandemic that it's just kind of become the norm now where more often than not, you are self-taping. I mean, sometimes I'll ask you for a screen test as well, but it's just kind of become standard. Whereas before it wasn't a normal thing. Is that the case for you? I I would say pre pandemic, uh, there was still some of it, but, um, the norm now is like pretty much 99.9% of my tapes uh, or auditions. So are our tapes. Wow. It's just kind of the way the world, the world has gone. And awesome. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, to be honest, when, when things are fully, fully open again, I, I don't know if it'll go back. Mm-hmm. Well, Hey, you know what, if it makes things more efficient, it makes lives easier for everybody. Yeah. And, and you know, it could get you involved in more projects. Hey, why not? Exactly. Exactly. Well, we always like to ask all our guests some kind of, random rapid fire questions just to get to know him better (laughs) are you ready john (laughs) i am i I hope so (laughs) all right i hope you're ready john here we go favorite late night snack oh man uh uh, popcorn (laughs) favorite guardians character other than your own Ooh, you can't do that to me come on (laughs) Uh, i'm gonna go with um uh cammy the llama all right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. I like that one. It's unique. Uh, favorite superhero besides Guardians? Wolverine. Oh, he's, he's, he's the man. Love him. Hands down. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned that you're also a, a big gamer. We're a big gamer growing up. Yeah. What's your all-time favorite video game and what's your all-time favorite video game console? People are either going to love me or hate me for these answers. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, favorite all-time game can i name a couple of franchises yeah go for it and if there's any current ones you're playing now too besides guardians feel that's free to really out. hard for me i am uh yeah I, I i've actually played through i streamed uh i streamed guardians uh on twitch on my twitch channel uh so i, I beat that um other than that favorite favorite franchises i mean one of my favorite franchises of all time is uh legend of zelda yeah hands down um that is probably my number one uh, I'm a big Halo guy as well. I love Halo. Uh, big fan of uh, The Last of Us and God of War mm-hmm. as well. Um, any any story driven, you know, narrative driven games, I'm usually all on board with. Uh, I, I kind of, I'm a, I'm an every console type of guy. I haven't dipped into the PC space yet, but I'm I'm very close. It's very tempting right now. Um, but yeah, uh, Mario. I grew up playing Nintendo. Like I'm a I was born in the 80s. I've had probably almost every Nintendo console. Favorite console all time? I mean, that's so tough. I... Oh, okay. How yeah. about this? I want to go. What was, the first, what was the first console maybe you got? First console I ever had was the, the original NES. Okay. Cool. Absolutely. Favorite of all time? I'm probably, probably the Super, Super Nintendo or... 
the N64 just because that was like in the nineties, I was, you know, I was that 14, 15 year old kid. Like I had all the time in the world, <laughs> you know, I'm not really working yet. And I was just plugging through video games 24 seven. But I mean, I, I love every console. I, I, I have them all. I got Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo. Same here. You make me feel better about myself. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> oh, man. And, and, and actually, I, lo I love that about Guardians, too, because no disrespect to any open world games. I love open world games. Those are cool, too, for sure. Yeah. But sometimes it's nice just to play like a, a narrative, like just like a regular like, narrative that doesn't totally like, deviate like all over the place and everything. Yeah. That's kind of like where you don't get lost. Like you're doing certain uh, side quests. And it's again, it's fine. I love those games, too. But I thought that was like a really pleasant surprise for me going into Guardians, not knowing a whole lot about it. I know about the story, but not about the gameplay itself and really I, I enjoyed it and i think a lot of people were kind of pleasantly surprised too because it was just very straightforward but it still kind of took you on a ride I, I think that's i think the industry the gaming industry as a whole kind of for the last five or so years maybe more have it started to lean on those open world you know ongoing gaming spaces like games as a service spaces where they're just they're a continuing a continued living, breathing entity online. And uh, I understand why, because they're absolutely phenomenal. But I, unfortunately, I, th I think by proxy of that, you're right. Like a lot of those story-driven games, um, they just lessened, I think. And it's really nice to see see games, you know, like Guardians, you know, kind of come back with these, you know, it's, it's just a, a beautiful story-driven narrative game it tells an amazing story and I, I think sometimes you lose a bit of that you know story impact with these open world games because they, they have to do so many things at once but uh, again i got to shout out you know mary and the narrative team because they again they hit a home run with the story on this game this, this is such an incredible story and such an incredible experience so thank you <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> uh, absolutely and we're going to talk about another cre incredible experience that might have happened in your career What's your most awkward moment as an actor? I, I wouldn't say it's awkward, but I, I was I was taken back. I was very surprised. I was I was shooting a, a film called House at the End of the Street, um, starring uh, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, and I remember hanging out with her. It was it was literally right before she took off to go shoot uh, X Men, uh, I believe it was. But uh, we were hanging out on set, and we we. We we're just talking. I can't remember how we even started, but we we started playing like patty cake with each other. <laughs> and I, I was like, "Oh, okay." Jennifer Lawrence wants to play. Okay, let's go. <laughs> it was, I can't remember how we fell into it. it. It happened organically, but I was like, "I can't believe I'm playing patty cakes with Jennifer Lawrence." <laughs> That's awesome. Now, every actor I feel like has at least kind of one cult film. Or cult show that they've been involved in. When I say cult show, I mean one that kind of has like a like a bit of a cult following that maybe didn't get enough love back in the day that people nowadays kind of remember fondly. For me, I feel like that uh, on your IMDb is the Covenant. So, do you have any memories of the Covenant? Yeah, I mean, and and the one that people seem to call me on the most is when I uh, when I threw up on camera. <laughs> that was the, the big one. One of the uh, one of the guys, you know flashed his eyes and, and used his powers on me and made me throw up all over somebody. But, uh, no, I, I, I remember, uh, there was a bar scene and, uh, I just remember having a lot of fun because all the guys, uh, all the guys on, uh, on set were great. And, uh, you know, in between actual shooting, we were, we were in a bar that had a pool table and we played a lot of pool and stuff while in between takes while we were shooting, uh, and, and it was a lot of fun. So if, if there's any covenant fans out there, <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, no, it was, a, it was a great cast, a great group of people, and and I had a lot of fun on it. Moving forward, would you like to do more of voice acting, or do you still prefer traditional acting? I don't think it's one over the other. I think it's for me, it's more about you know finding stuff that again tells a good story. You know, that's what like as an actor, that's something that we're always drawn to is telling really good stories. Um, so for me, it's less about. I guess the medium per se, and it's more about, you know, what's going to tell um, a really, you know, interesting, unique story. And that's what I loved about guardians is that, you know, they, they went out of their way to, to make it, you know, a unique thing that exists in its own, its own universe, really. Mm -hmm. um, but am I open to more? Absolutely. I mean, as you know, 
as a as a, a lifelong gamer, a hundred percent. You know, if if somebody called me tomorrow, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> send me the script, I'm in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but yeah, for me, for me, it's about you know telling a really interesting an interesting story that people will resonate. Uh, and that's kind of where I gravitate, whether it's film, TV, or or video games with voice or motion capture. I'm sure there's a lot of maybe aspiring actors, creators watching this. So what's the best piece of advice you give them for success? Don't give up. Uh, believe in yourself. It's uh, We touched on this earlier, but um, anything in the arts can be in- incredibly trying at times. And uh, especially in the entertainment industry, uh, there's a lot of pushback and... You know, I started very young and there's a lot of no's like for every role that I have booked, uh, there's probably a a thousand percent increase in the amount of times I've been told no. It's it's part of the industry. Um, it is really hard. It really is. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, um, but it's incredibly rewarding. And if, if you love what you do, don't let that get dent. Don't let that get you down. Sorry, I, I really mean that because there are there are times where, you know, I was like, "That's it, I quit. <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore." But you know, trust in yourself. If you love what you do, just just follow your heart and and follow your dreams because it it will be worth it. I promise you that. Well said. Thank well, you. John, John, it's been a pleasure to talk to you to get to know your background and hear about your your experiences and everything else. Much respect your body of work. Where can fans find you online? If you want to say hi? I'm on. Uh, I'm on. All the things pretty much, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, uh, just my name, John McLaren, J-O-N McLaren, like the car, unfortunately, no relation. Uh, I also stream on uh, Twitch uh, a couple times a week. If there's any gamers out there who want to swing by and watch me struggle at a whole bunch of video games, I'm at, uh, again, my name, John McLaren IRL on uh, on Twitch, if you guys want to come check it out. John, thank you so much for the time. Fred, thank you, man. It's a pleasure to be here.